Natural Selection Theory In the mid-19th century, a modern theory of evolution took hold. In his book, On the Origin of a Species by Means of Natural Selection, published in 1859, Darwin described the evolution of life as a process of natural selection. Life, he suggested, is a competitive struggle to survive, often in the face of limited resources. Living things must compete for food and space. They must evade the ravages of predators and diseases while dealing with unpredictable shifts in their environment, such as the changes in climate. Darwin suggested that, within a given population in a given environment, certain individuals possess characteristics that make them more likely to survive and reproduce. These individuals will pass these critical characteristics on to their offspring. The number of organisms with these traits increases, as each generation passes on the advantageous combination of traits. Outmatched individuals lacking the beneficial traits gradually decrease in number. Slowly, Darwin argued, natural selection tips the balance in a population toward those with the combination of traits or adaptations best suited to their environment. Among many examples of natural selection in nature, Industrial melanism in the peppered moth has been, perhaps, the most iconic. The peppered moth story was, at least until recently, a key demonstration of natural selection used in almost every textbook of evolution. Before the Industrial Revolution, the peppered moth was mostly found in a light gray form with little black speckled spots. The light-bodied moths were able to blend in with the light-colored lichens and tree bark, and the less common black moth was more likely to be eaten by birds. Because of the prevalence of the common light-colored lichens and English trees, therefore, the light-colored moths were much more effective at hiding from predators, and the frequency of the dark alili was about 0.01%. During the early decades of the Industrial Revolution in England, however, the countryside between London and Manchester was blanketed with soot from the new coal-burning factories. Many of the light-bodied lichens died from sulfur dioxide emissions, and the trees became covered with soot. This led to an increase in bird predation for light-colored moths, as they no longer blended in as well in their polluted ecosystem. Indeed, their bodies now dramatically contrasted with the color of the bark. Dark-colored moths, on the other hand, were camouflaged very well by the blackened trees. Although a majority of light-colored moths initially continued to be produced, most of them didn't survive. While the dark-colored moths flourished, as a result, over the course of many generations of moths, the allele frequency gradually shifted towards the dominant allele, as more and more dark-bodied moths survived to reproduce. By the mid-19th century, the number of dark-colored moths had risen noticeably, and by 1895, the percentage of dark-colored moths in the Manchester peppered moth population was reported at 98%, a dramatic change from the original frequency. This evolved darkening in color, as a result of industrialization, has come to be known as the industrial melanism. Many field experiments carried out across Britain in the last half of the 20th century have given good evidence for a tight correlation between the frequency of melanism and the degree of urbanization and smoke pollution. This relationship becomes even more convincing when one considers the considerable decline in the frequency of melanism since the Clean Air Act of the late 1960s in Britain. In an environment with cleaner air and less pollution, the dark-bodied moth 
is becoming less frequent. This reverse shift in the peppered moth population, together with the original rise of melanism, provides even stronger evidence to Darwin's natural selection theory.